A small group of simple farmers gather around a small building as the Ayusha ship approximately 20 times the size of the building settled on the ground. An elevator tube extended to the ground from the ship and a lone Jazra initially emerged in his environmental suit. Looking at the small gathering, the translator engaged. My name is Jazra from the Ayusha race. We have heard your call for help and we have come to offer our aid. I would like to meet Levex. The small crowd slowly parts as Levex, a beautiful young lady from the Watcher Communications image, and a handsome young man slowly push their way through the small crowd until they come to the front. While the people have watched, two other Ayusha and Winnix emerged from the ship and soon come over to join Jazra. The gas from the crowd emerged with the view of Winnix. She had no environmental suit and looked very much like a woman of their race. Levex stepped forward to greet the new visitors. Welcome, Jerex. I'm Levex, and this is Varian. I promised. Varian stood next to Levex and smiled at the small group of aliens. Jazra nodded to Levex and Varian. We are happy to meet you. We have many plans to make, much to discuss, and time is short. First, I need to see the Ivalias you captured. With a touch of shock, push for action. Levex led Jazra into one of the buildings where the alien Ivalias was being tied to the post. Jazra studied the alien for a moment, then advanced while Winnix stayed with Levex. Reaching the position in front of the alien, Jazra looked over the Ivalias as if studying an insect. After being satisfied he understood the alien's body design, Jazra motioned for it to speak. After a few sounds by the alien, Jazra's language translator had understood and began translation. I don't know what you want from me. Jazra continued to study the alien. I am Jazra of a race known as the Oja. Please tell me who you are. The Ivalia is announced. I am Vedex of the clan Lewex. I am Yaruti. Jazra responded, we know you are not of this galaxy. We are also aware you are not of this planet. We are here to protect these people. The alien Vedex's body stiffened. You won't be able to protect them. When my clan arrive, you will not be able to do anything to stop us. Jazra smiled, what you think is not important. We will protect them. Satisfied he knew what he needed, Jazrax turns and walks out of the building, followed by the other people that had joined him. Levex proceeds to lead the small party to an adjoining structure. The work was underway to prepare the defenses. The ship robot systems reached out into the parts of the solar system to gather supplies from various asteroids. The ship's systems rush invisibly as they begin the job to manufacture the defenses needed to implement the battle plan, with the Ayusha eyes viewing the monitors. Within a short period of time, as units were finished by the robots, the Ayushas began to position a series of powerful local field disruptors in orbit and test their destructive plasma beam generators, issuing a proper distribution to cover all angles of approach. The ship's defense systems were being tested and retested. Extra shielding enhanced the ship's existing shields. Additional power generators continued to be added to extend the necessary cloaking, electromagnetic, and mass density disruption fields the ships would be generating for protection. Work progressed in orbit to build a series of large plasma guns. As each was completed, it was transwapped to the planet's surface to place plasma guns in position in coordination with the major towns located around the planet. The smaller Ayusha craft arrived around the planet to support the communities and to add support with concentrated firepower. In the ship's command center, Yefer, Letter, and Bardex are viewing the ship monitors. Yefer sees motion of the alien fleet. Jazrax sensors are reporting a fleet just parked outside the solar system. I think you said they called themselves Elwax. Letter, are weapon systems ready? Letter looks up from his status monitor. Yes, Commander. All systems are positioned, cloaked, and ready to activate. 
I'm headed weapons control center. Artix, take over my monitor position. The effer following the defense plan calls out. Jazrex, letter. Keep everything out of sight and no activation of the defense systems until I give the command. I see smaller scout ships from around the galaxy are returning to the main fleet outside the furthest planet. On the surface, Jazrex answers back. Our trader flight teams are moving the Adratix people into underground shelters where they will have better protection. We can use any unneeded personnel to transport down with plasma rifles, defense shields and supplies. They can help defend the Adratic and the underground caves. Bardex calls out from his station. Yefer, letter, Jazrex. We have two incoming scout ships. Yefer responds to the status. Jazrex, we have observed two scout ships approaching the planet. We don't want to spook the main force. We are letting them pass. Outside the solar system, a large fleet of ships sits in a loose cluster. On the lead ship is in the communications center. A message is heard from the two scout ships sent to take a look at the blue-green planet orbiting around the yellow star. Scout 1 and 2 reporting. No opposition encountered. We are able to start supply collection. Missing scout ship has been observed. A pilot has not been spotted. An LWAX alien steps forward and responds. Scout 1 and Scout 2, continue collection and wait for the fleet to join you shortly. In the command center of the main ship, a large LWAC with a golden color sash turns to one of his commanders. Something just doesn't feel right. Issue the command for Force A to deploy to the planet. Force B to stay here and reserve just in case. The commander issues the command at the console. Looking at the monitors, half the ships disappear, leaving the other half. In the command center of the Ayusha mothership, Bardex notices the movement of the fleet. Here they come, but only half the force. Yefer thought for a second, and with quick decision reacts. Now, activate defenses. In orbit, thousands of disruptor mines activate, attacking Elwax ships creating a field transporting everything in 100 meter range, far off into space out of orbit. Those LWAC ships, unlucky to find themselves in the vicinity of one of these mines, suddenly are found with large gaping sections removed from their ship. Smaller ships are launched from the LWAC ships, both to escape the mother ship's destruction and to attack the planet. Many of the smaller ships attempt to jump over the area of minefields, trying to make it into the upper atmosphere. As the smaller ships find gaps in the minefield, others follow their tracks. Some of those following are destroyed as the mines keep moving in a random pattern. The surviving smaller ships form into a group after exiting the minefield to begin their attack runs on the planet in their standard formation. Bardex, monitoring the situation, reacts to the smaller attack craft maneuver. Letter. Activate the orbiting plasma cannons. Drive them into the ground cannons. Plasma cannons in orbit decloak and begin slicing through the packs of smaller LWAX ships, taking a heavy toll. Two of the LWAX motherships retreat to the part of the fleet outside the solar system. The remaining smaller ships continue to press the attack, scattering to present a dispersed set of smaller targets for the orbiting satellite weapons. The smaller attack ships find themselves now cut off from the mother ships. Their weapons try to attack the plasma cannons in orbit, but they cloak and decloak with apparent instant random movements. The constant shifting gives the LWAC systems little time to target. Sometimes a shot would hit, but even then, the shields on the cannons held. The ground cannon fire intensifies and drives the attack ships towards the site of Levesque's small town on the planet surface. In the communication center of the main LWAC ship, a message arrives. Commander, we are being decimated in the air. We cannot penetrate the enemy's plasma cannons. We are going to attempt to take down the local gun by ground attack. A swarm of LWAC ships begin to appear in a valley close to the Ayusha plasma cannon, just outside the town of the Adrexia. Only 500 of the attacking LWAC forces remain of the original 15,000 
who left the motherships. The now grounded ships find landing positions in the large valley. Plasma cannon had destroyed many of the attacking ships on their slope downward, but now set silent with no targets to attack. The OX scout leaders gather their equipment and issue commands to the remaining ship pilots as they begin to form their numbers into ground forces. The flight leader loudly issues his order to leave a few pilots to stand guard at the ships. The somewhat disorganized army slowly makes their way over a close by river up the hillside towards the plasma gun emplacement. The pilots were not trained in organized ground operations and showed their lack of discipline as the force moved towards the plasma gun station. When the LWAX arrives at the base of the cannon, they find no sign of life forms. The large gun structure appears unguarded with no movement in the area. The gun towers over the LWAX, which are small in stature compared to the Adrexia people. In the forest outside the Adrexia town, Jazrak has led his craft, along with Winnix's and Levix's help, is busy organizing the Adrexia people. The town is moving towards the local caves. Walking with the group, he calls out over his communications unit. All flight traders coordinate on me. The OX have transferred to ground forces. We need to organize and protect the Adrexia people now at risk. Approach cloaked to prevent giving away our locations. We need to form a ground force. Their weapons may injure our ships and we can't protect the Adrexia from the air. We will have help from some of the Adrexia town men. Remember, this is a race that cannot be given any chance. They must be removed from presenting any harm to the planet's race. You're receiving our ground plan. Come fast and be prepared for extended ground time. We do not get paid by YouTube for any of our videos, so please consider your contr contributions. Thank you. If you enjoy our videos, please click Patreon on the front page and buy me a drink. Thank you. Please like and subscribe the Watcher in the Fall channel.